Yarra, I think we just saw on social media, Adam Gilchrist out there doing a bit of a pitch report. Have you had a look at it? And do you have any thoughts early on? Oh, I've just had a look right now. Um, yeah, it looks, a, it looks a really good wicket. I, I expect uh, it'll be typical um, and what you expect when you come to Western Australia and it'll have bounce, it'll have good pace and, and that in itself will be a really good challenge for our boys. We, we've come from a couple of uh, pitches against England where it, where it was lower, I guess, and, and not quite as quick. So that's going to be our main challenge that we're facing the next couple of days in the nets is getting used to that extra, extra pace and bounce. Do you consider bringing in someone like a Lockie Ferguson, if, if that is the case, if you do see a fair bit of pace and bounce in that weekend? Yeah, I definitely consider it. I mean, we've got 15 people here that are all in consideration for the for, for the playing 11. Um, and, and yeah, we'll, we'll work that out after after the next couple of trainings. No, not yet. Trent, Trent will have a bowl this afternoon and we'll see how he goes after that. And then, we'll again, we'll decide. Um, look, I mean, Trent, Trent we, we've got to be really careful how we, we manage the next couple of days if, if we do think he's going to start as well. So I, can't, I don't think if you stay around and watch today, you'll see him bowling 15 overs or anything out there. But he, he does need to be able to prove that he can get it the intensity that we want. Gary, what's the biggest challenge for you guys coming over here? Is it as simple as the pace and bounce or are there other factors you have to adjust to as well? To Perth in particular? You... Well, Perth and Australia in general for you guys, you're, it's been tough for you over here historically. Oh, I think the biggest challenge for us is, is coming over here and facing Australia. I mean, they, they have a record that is uh, pretty formidable, especially at, at home, and they're obviously a quality team and, and you don't get a record like that by... Um, not playing very, very well and knowing your conditions. And um, coming here to Perth, I think, is probably the most extreme that, that we will face. Um, perhaps if it was Melbourne or Sydney, it's maybe a little bit more like home. So good on them for bring, bringing us over here first. You must, though, have a lot of faith in your top six. They've come off a pretty prolific series against England. Their record over the last three or four years is strong. I know you weren't in charge of the team four years ago, but you feel it's a better team now than it was four years ago? Um, I think we've been a really settled team for a, for a period of time, and I think that's helped uh, guys understand their roles and understand what we're, what, how the, well, the way that we want to play. And um, if, 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 if we have a strength, I think that's what it's been, is that consistency, I guess, of selection and, and guys knowing how the roles that we want them to play. Gary, do you think that it's a bit talk this morning about whether New Zealand fly under the radar. Do you think they do a bit as a team? Do you think you fly under the radar? Oh, I'm not sure. I mean, we just fly over here like all other teams do and, and prepare. So um, uh, whether we fly under the pra uh, radar is perhaps what other people to think about. I mean, we just go about our business and try and prepare the best we can and, and put up a fight out there. And some days we're good enough and other days we're not. And, and that's, that's, I guess, sport and cricket at times. But... I know for sure that we'll be out there giving our best and trying our hardest, and, and that's one thing the guys do every day. On that though, do you, do you, is this the best New Zealand team that's come to Australia perhaps in 30, 35 years since maybe you know guys like Richard Hadley were around? Uh, well, there's only been a couple of tours since then, and, and I mean, again, it's very, very hard to compare decades to decades and, and what happens, but um, look, we're, we've played some pretty good cricket the last few years, and, and that's encouraging, and I think we will always take confidence from that. Um, but as I said earlier, this is a different, uh, I think, a different challenge than what we've had for, for, a, for a while. We've had a lot of success in our, in our home um, country and we, we play well there generally. Um, but Australia also came and beat us there a, a few years ago. So um, they're obviously a quality team. Um, Gary, a lot of teams come to Perth and they see the conditions and they drop the spinner and play like an all-pace attack. But do you think Mitchell Santner is at a stage in his career where just purely on his bowling he can play in all conditions? He's, has he matured to that level? Well, I think Mitchell can play in, in all conditions and I think we've got Todd Astle there as a leg spinner as well who also provides, a, a, I guess, a different point of view. So. Certainly, I mean, some teams do do that. I mean, Australia are a wee bit unique, I think, in the way they play. They often have their three pace bowlers and, and Nathan Lyon. And Lyon, again, has got 300 test wickets and plus. And, and so not many, bowl, not many spin bowlers who are currently playing around the world have that many and, and have that experience in these conditions. And just about your batsmen, uh, 
like in the last couple of years, they started making like big hundreds. Has that been like the biggest turnaround you've seen in uh, New Zealand's test batting? Um, oh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think every time the, the batsmen go out there, they're trying to score as many runs as they can for the team. I, I think one of the things that, that our guys have done well the last few years is, uh, is consolidate, as you say, on their starts and, and be able to hopefully turn hundreds into double hundreds. And we've had a little bit of success in that the last few years, which has been great. Um, so yeah, long may it continue. <laughs> Gary, just, just kind of one more on how the team is perceived. Do you think you guys have gained enough kudos for going to number two in the world? You're only behind India now. If that was a, a few other teams, you can imagine them really getting pumped up. Do you think New Zealand have, have gained that sort of standing that they deserve? Uh, I think after this summer, you'll, you'll probably know a lot more. Um, I think when you look at the programme that we have, we play England in two tests, Australia in three, and then India in two you'd argue that they, they are up there with the best teams in the world right now. So I think when we get to the end of the summer, it's probably an easier time for me to, to answer that question. Yeah, you're training in Optus all week. Um, we heard Australia talk this morning about using dusk sessions to get used to the football. Is that something you guys are doing as well? Yeah, we trained under lights uh, yesterday and we'll do that again tomorrow. Um, yeah, I think we've got to be careful that we don't overstate the, the pink ball though as well. Um, we start an hour earlier than most pink ball tests start as well, so it's an hour less in darkness at the end of the day. So I think perhaps a, a bigger factor may be the heat that we're going to face over the next four or five days as well and, and just making sure that we're aware of that. I mean, we've played in many different conditions before, so it's not a surprise to people, but um, yeah, I, we, we certainly don't want to overstate the, the, the pink ball and what it might do at night as well. Uh, Gary, you mentioned those pitches you had for the England test. Do, do those sort of benign tracks that you seem to be increasingly getting at home almost work to your disadvantage when you go away, when you suddenly find yourselves on livelier or different sort of playing surfaces? I think wherever you come to from around the world, you come to uh, Perth and, and you'll probably think it's a bit lively from wherever you've played. I mean, even probably coming from the eastern coast of Australia as well. Um, Look, I think one of the good things that happened in the first test at Mount Maunganui is we saw plating in the wicket and, and we saw it get quite up and down. And I think that that was encouraging for us. Whilst it might not have had the same bounce, what it did have is the variability of bounce that we that we have to get used to as well. So in some ways, I still see positives coming from, from that test match in particular with the up and downness that we faced. Well, there's some uh, pretty tragic news coming out of New Zealand. How are the players holding up after hearing that? And are you guys planning to do anything special? pay tribute to that? Um, look, I, I mean, it's it's not my place to organise that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure there will be uh, something that's done. It, it sounds like there's sort of Kiwi and, and Australian people that may be affected in this. So from our team's point of view, I mean, it, it sort of puts things back into perspective that we it is a game and it's all we're playing is a game. And when, when you hear about lives lost and that and, and something tragic like that, it's, uh, yeah, it's devastating to hear. It's terrible to hear and, and you don't wish that upon anyone. Last one. Just on, just on Lockie Ferguson, I know obviously it probably depends on Trent's fitness and a few other things, but given what you've seen of him in the one-day arena and you know his pace, it, you're confident he's ready for Test cricket. And do you think a deck like this at Optus Stadium would, would in fact suit him if he was to debut? Uh, I think most wickets will suit Lockie. I mean, he's certainly got pace and we're, we're acutely aware of that. And Lockie's got a very good red ball uh, record as well. I mean, the hard thing for us has been uh, Harry fits into the, the team as well when we've had some success with guys who have been consistently there. Um, do I think the pace will suit him? Yeah, I, I do. I mean, no doubt about it. People want to see the ball flying around and, and, again, look at Australia's attack and they're sort of built around players like Stark and Cummins and, and Hazelwood as well. So um, if Lockie gets a go out there, I think it'll be exciting and, and yeah, it'll be, it'll be good to see if that is the case.